Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at foreground and background process management in Linux. Um, this is intended for uh, the command line or SSH sessions, and we're going to go over a few different um, applications that you can use to help make this a little bit uh, So let's go ahead and jump on in. Today we're going to be working in Fedora 31. No particular reason. It uh, would be the same in any distribution. It uh, just happens to be what we have loaded. Um, we're going to start by looking at the uh, FG application. And in order to kind of investigate this a little bit further, we're going to use um, a program called Sleep. Uh, now what Sleep is, is you basically, you know, type Sleep and then a time frame like 10,000 and uh, you you hit enter and when the system hits 10,000 it's going to go ahead and put the system to sleep. But for our purposes today it's just really simple and convenient to have something that just runs and doesn't uh, do anything so that we can kind of show how to foreground and background processes. So if I were on an SSH session or log direct, directly into a console um, this would be, you know, inconvenient. I'd have to, you know, just sit here and wait, or I couldn't get my console back um, until the sleep command completes. So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is, is a control C, uh, and basically that just stops that command from running. Um, so uh, a better way to do this is, is normally um, to type sleep and then, or whatever your command in is, and then 10,000, and then put an ampersand at the end. And what this tells it is go, go ahead and uh, run in the background and give me back my, my cursor, my, my command prompt. So you'll see that it goes ahead and it looks like it spawns process 40, 44026, job number one here. And um, that sleep program is now running in the background. If I use the word jobs here, um, I can see the different jobs that are running in the background in their current state. So job number one is running and it is called sleep 10,000. So if I were to say, for instance, uh, to run another one of these and then type jobs, I'm gonna see that I have two jobs running there. Um, you'll see this little plus. Uh, this means it is the last thing that was entered into the jobs line. Um, and the minus is the second to last thing. So if I uh, do one more, you're gonna see there's nothing there next to it uh, when I go to look at the jobs again. Um, it just is a blank space here. So you can kind of see that it's, it's cycled back. Um, the reason they do this is uh, when we're working with jobs, uh, it's gonna assume if you don't give it a job number that you always want to address the plus um, job. So. Uh, I'll, I'll show you that and it'll make more sense. So if we go now and we say, oh geez, you know, on sleep uh, 10,001, I really, you know, want to do something else and I want that process back. That's where the FG or kind of foreground application comes in. So you can type FG and a space, and then uh, you can do a percent and the job number in our example, we want to get two back and say, G give me that one back. And you can see we go ahead and we get that sleep 10,001 back again. And we can work with it or cancel it or, you know, see how it's doing if it's a different application that's running. In this particular uh, example, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, spend it by doing a control Z. Uh, now what control Z does is it gives me my command back, but it doesn't kill the process, it puts it in a, a stopped mode. So now if I look at jobs, you're going to see that uh, job two, which is the last one I've interacted with, is stopped. Um, so, you know, we've got a, another job running um, there on one and three, but two is stopped. So I'm going to clear the screen with a control L, I'm going to type jobs again so we can see these. So what do I do if I want to get job two running again? Um, I can then use kind of the backgrounding application where I can come in here and type BG. And once again, a percent two to say that I want um, 
job number two to run in the background. So now, if I look at my jobs, I can see that it's running again. And this is kind of how you can jump in and out of jobs and keep them running or delete them or, or remove them and bring them backwards and forwards. And it helps you be really efficient when you have a single SSH session or a single command prompt console to work with. Um, so there's a couple things here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, foregrounding again. So if I just do FG, it's going to bring back uh, number three because it's got the plus. So you can see, sure enough, it's a uh, 10,002 gave back to us. Um, now, if I want to cancel that job, I can do a control C and, and that basically breaks the job so it's not there anymore. I can do a, a jobs and see that it's sure enough, it's not running. Um, now, uh, I'm going to show you another interesting part here. So now that you kind of understand foregrounding and backgrounding and, and what happens with those and what the minus and plus is for, um, you know, there's one more switch that you should probably be aware of. Uh, if you do, a, I believe it's a dash L on uh, jobs, you're going to get, yep, sure enough, uh, you're going to get the, uh, the process ID for each one of these jobs as well. So um, I, I know I've got, you know, 44026 running. Now, if I go ahead and I close my terminal and I open it back up again, get this to a viewable size, um, and then I do jobs. Oh, you know what, they're all gone. Um, and the reason they're all gone is because those jobs are associated with that terminal session. And when you close a terminal session, it basically sends uh, a, hang a hang up signal to any of the processes that it started. Um, so it, it can be a big problem, you know. Um, and, and you know, what do I do if I want that to continue to run um, when I close a terminal. Uh, well, that's where the, the no hup and the disown um, programs come in. If I am uh, able to really think ahead of time, um, I can type uh, no hup and then my job, uh, we'll go back to sleep 10,000 here uh, and ampersand. And uh, we can do a uh, 10,001 with a no hub. Uh, basically, uh, what happens here and what this, this is saying is it's going to append any output from this application to a file because it's building this process so that it can operate without the current terminal that it has and it's giving it a place to put output to. Um, if I look in my home directory, there's now going to be a nohub.out file that is waiting for um, input from these processes, and that's all that means there. So if I do a control L, now if I look at my jobs, um, you're going to see that uh, I have these running just like I did before. Uh, but the big difference is um, if I exit out of a terminal and I open it back up again, Uh, I'm going to um, still not see anything in jobs because this is always going to be um, relevant to a terminal session. However, if I look at the um, if I look at the uh, processes that are running, um, I'm going to see that I still have those due processes because I told those processes not to hang up when um, the terminal session closed. Uh, so they're still running, um, they're still in the background. I can't get them back to the foreground again, but I can make it so that they continue to run. Um, in this case, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna uh, kill those off. Fair enough, um, and clear my screen. So um, the, the, the problem with, no hub is that you really have to have the foresight to know that you're going to be closing your window and that you don't want those to hang up when you run them. Uh, I don't tend to be that organized. So what I tend to do is uh, uh, use the disown function, which allows you to uh, put a statement in or which allows you to disconnect 
uh, a process from a terminal session after it's already been created. So in this case, if I were working like we were before and I said, oh, sleep, you know, 10,000 in the background and sleep uh, 10,001 to the background and I look at my jobs and there they are and I go, oh shoot, I'm gonna have to close this terminal window, but um, I don't want to uh, lose these processes. You can use the disown function. Um, disown, you just type disown and then you type uh, the job number. Uh, so if I said disown one, I'm sorry, a percent job number. So if I said disown one, then I look at my jobs. I'm not gonna see one there anymore um, because I've disowned it and it's not mine. But the advantage of that is it's also not gonna be terminated when I close my terminal session. So if now if I said, um, you know, disown two, um, you know, we can see those processes are still running. Uh, but they are no longer showing in my job queue. Okay, so um, just like before, if I close my terminal session and open it back up again, I'm going to uh, not see them in jobs, but I'll be able to find them in my process list. Right. All right, so that's the purpose of disown and uh, nohub and uh, a little bit about how to manage processes from the foreground and the background um, and, and how to work with different things when you're on a terminal session or a console session or an SSH session. Um, it's really useful to, to know some tricks so that you don't have to undo a bunch of work. So I'd really also recommend that you check out uh, my screen video. Uh, Linux Screen is an application you can use to make this whole process a lot easier as well. Um, I hope you found this useful and I appreciate it. Uh, you guys have a great day. Talk to y'all later.